Yes, folks, the euro is toilet paper. But just remember, in the United States of America, too, we are at all-time highs on prices of toilet paper. And I mean actual toilet paper, but factually, the euro is toilet paper, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what anybody says, and this guy knows what he's talking about. And every financial person in the United States of America knows this is true, too. The American dollar is very undervalued. And what, what happened in Brazil was an actual attack on the... United States Treasury, ladies and gentlemen, okay? The United States Treasury, and it's no joke, ladies and gentlemen, was attacked, okay? There is a divorce, and basically the euro is toilet paper, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what anybody says, okay? Factual. Get a wheelbarrow out. They ain't worth poop. Now, take off to space, folks, and this basically is actually a movie, okay? You're not going to see the movie line move, but you're going to see it flutter, okay? And basically, uh... They are having to maneuver satellites because of CME action, as you've seen, and in in basically I I'll take you to the CME action again that I showed you in the last video, and we'll see if we'll give you, I'll give you like maybe the 19th or something like that. Now remember that this is a star cluster that is below and in out front of the sun and the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And remember all this darkness that we're getting because and all the factuality that Bino is the only one that tells you about the meatball out there and causing darkness. And basically the meatball's there, the sun's hitting it, super blast and basically I'll hit refresh on this and I didn't want this but we'll show you core a anyway because basically it's playing and, and as you see we are still getting huge CMEs and it's not going to stop and then you can see where basically they wanted to block out something because something came through on a layer there and I'll play it here long enough that you'll see they'll block that again they blocked something up there and there and basically remember 3d fast moving objects so basically they don't want anybody to get scared shitless so some things are getting blocked because basically you see it block there and you'll see it again block up over here in this corner here also. So that's a massive movement in space. And there we saw another travel of light through space there. And I'll see if I can freeze that back. And you've seen from the meatball and the, on when I accidentally ran in on the 12th. And there you go. There's another. There's that there. Let me see if I can back that up. Actually, I think I'll just wait for it to come again and then we'll just go back. Okay, so I'm going to reverse. I think I will get it. There you go. So now this light propagation through space, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen this before. And also, as you see that that light comes through, that basically you get a 3D effect right there. Let me zoom this in. You know, that, And yes, you can realize, folks, through the deepest, deepest distances you've ever thought of space, that light came. Okay, and we know through anybody that's watched space out there at Soho for a long time, it's just ever since Soho has been up there, it's just totally astounding. This didn't come from the sun and the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen, and also on x-ray you get to see whatever the heck's there too. So basically, you get a 3D effect because basically there's a planet right there because there's the light going by like an x-ray and bam, bam, you can see that there's a planet right there next to the sun to the left. And there's tons of planets out here, folks. There's all kinds of stuff. Okay, this is fresh. We'll have a date for you in a second. And if we move left, there you go. You know that there's a planet right there. There's a there's obstacles right there, ladies and gentlemen, that basically when that light comes propagating through, and you know it's not from the sun and the supergiants. You've seen it. You can just back the video up. And then we'll come up here, and we see that we got stuff up here, too. So factual, actual. There is tons of stuff out there. The space is crowded. There's a lot of space between all this stuff. but And I'll pop out. We'll just pop out so you know that we've got going on. There's no ever fast playing with you. And there you go. That light propagation did not come. Now, I'm not saying absolutely not the supergiants because the supergiants are humongous, but it does look like that it came from another star structure somewhere out in space. Okay? And also remember what we showed you on the 12th. Go back a few videos. And because on the 20th, this was close to an M. Okay? And I believe I had the data earlier in the week, last week, showing you on it. And we'll zoom in a little bit here on this. We'll go to 150, I think, and there we go. Should play. Remember, always view it on full screen. And basically, there's Venus reacting, doing its atmospheric. As you see, the Venus do what it does, whether it's moving, getting pushed on its static, and maybe put out of its orbit a little bit. So that's another thing is it's interesting what GPAL will ever tell us about how much of these CMEs, are they moving things out of their normal trajectory? And are they on new trajectories? And we do also see that they have zoomed out so they can see, you can see the head of that comet down here, this comet here. Because if it's not a comet, then there is a planet doing a steady, huge CME atmospheric 
reaction or there's a tiny star that is doing CMEs towards the sun, a very tiny one. Well, it wouldn't be that damn tiny because the idea that it's way off in space, it could be as large as Venus or Earth or whatever. So uh, is that Earth, is that our, since they won't show us the magnetosphere anymore, is it Earth there? Because basically it's somewhat in the coordinates where the idea on the V between me, Venus and Mercury, and let me show you the map again, because there's what you should see again. Remember A ahead and you're shooting, and so the left-hand side of A you see Mercury, and the B you should right-hand side see Venus, and Earth is over here. Okay, and remember that everything's at a different height. Okay, we do these rotations, these orbits through space, and we follow the sun, but factually everything's at a different height. And so we'll follow this here. This is the latest. Let it play through, and as long as I know that you got a day's worth of action of this going on. And there you go. That should be a day's worth of action of this huge CME. And I'll move up a little bit so you get all the top. There you go. Looks like I can fit it all in. Basically, you're seeing everything that the shot's got, except for the bottom below the clock. And I can even switch that down just a little bit. There you go. That should just be about every flipping square inch you can get. So, what planet is this back here? And then you can really get an idea. And the meatball is right there. You can see the meatball is right there. Okay, I'll keep going in a circle, and basically if you watch it and back it up, you will see that the meatball is right there. Okay, and you get all the darkness down here on Earth. You can go to uh, all the webcams down at uh, Nehemiah, and if you don't get there to Nehemiah, if they shut that down a little bit, then you are knowing for actual factual that that's what causes the blackness out in space and not see the stars. Now, I was joking about giving NASA an excuse for not seeing any stars in the Mars, I mean in all the uh, moon footage and that's another thing ladies and gentlemen China is going to go to the moon China wants to go to the moon China wants to get on the moon and if there's political wrangling ladies and gentlemen over the next few years that's exactly what it's going to be is the idea that nobody wants China to go to the moon because well I don't know you take your popular guess take your uh, calculated guess and calculated uh, usually gets down to calculated you calculate and then you can uh, integral derivatives you can put a rocket on Mars, ladies and gentlemen, and we are. Curiosity's going up there, and uh, China's already got the space lab up there, so the meatball is right there, and actual factual is China is going to want to go to the moon, and they're getting ready to do it. They want to. They want to get on the moon. They want to land and walk on the moon like everybody else has, all by themselves, uh, to put it up everybody's butt, ladies and gentlemen, and if they don't do it, they'll have North Korea do it. Uh, so, Anyway, whether it's an ice ball or if there's actually moon dust up there, it might just be a giant ice ball. We'll find out. Eventually, someone's going to land. We are, eventually, we're going to go back to the moon, ladies and gentlemen. We have to. Okay. I remember Bino always wants to get down to the Nats' ass. So the idea when they give you that uh, that AU, remember, it's 93.48 million miles. And you got to remember that we are getting close now to the farthest away that we've ever been to the sun. Okay. So now start paying attention to the idea how far away do we get because the largest distance from orbit center that we've ever had is right there. Okay? And that's how I always say it's 365.25636 days in a year is how much we rotate around the sun. At what height or it's always different, I believe. And where are we changing in paths out there because of all the CME action that's knocking everything around? Here's just from orbit of the sun. Is that. And we were probably at the all time closeness a little while back. So we've been moving hella fast and it, that worldwide magnetosphere. So then when you go to solar artists, is, is you can cheat by looking at uh, their auroral and our magnetis going through space because when we come up and we look at actual factual. We will see, you can see the aurora there. So when the worldwide magnetosphere is down, you can see our coronal here gets showed you on this map. And they've zoomed in a little bit because basically we've been paying attention before. Either that or the coronal's gotten so huge as we're moving through space. And as you see, you can see it's pretty much and then it expands. And then that's our ass end. That would be our spoiler. The sun shines on Earth over here on this side. This is a satellite that is moving around and orbiting Earth. Okay. Geocentenary orbit, okay, geoscience, geosystem, geosync, okay, and that is our aurora as we spin through space, and over here on the left you'll see the CMA action that comes off the sun, coronal mass ejection, that's Earth right there, these are satellites, here's your key up here, 
Mercury had, I believe, what did we have, Spitzer or something? One of them was hiding out. Basically, it was this one here. So basically, yeah, Spitzer was hiding out behind Mercury a long time ago. So if you imagine how the distance, how fast we can travel through space, ladies and gentlemen, because Spitzer was hiding out with uh, Mercury earlier this year, just not, not too many months ago, just in the last couple months, was hiding out over here behind Mercury. So we can travel hella fast through space, ladies and gentlemen. And Bino's got a patent. That he's got in his head and he's not going to write on paper. I can travel hella fast through space, faster than the vacuum that we know we have the ability to do through space. Space travel is coming faster than you can believe, ladies and gentlemen. So basically, Mercury got a big CME blast, as you see there. Basically, I don't even need to go to the other graph, and we can go down to the data, and you'll see comparably that you'll see the more, uh, more, uh, and basically we have a triangulation burn right now on the sun. As you see, more than likely that's not marble; it is static electrical, and it's going bang, bang, bang. And we will see it over here on the right, as you see the other shot, bang, bang, bang. Okay, it's electrical static. Okay, because you can see it there and there and there, and I don't have time to edit. Basically, we'll flop back over here, and we'll go back down through the data. As you see big spikes here, and as I showed you, we were breaking off, and basically there, you know. So, and we come, oh, that's the radio flux, and basically come across, and you'll see that we are not quite cross-phasing right now. And it is calmer, and we are leveling out a little bit, okay. And we're just at hitting low C's right now on coronal mass ejections, but remember everything I showed you on the 20th there and the 19th and so forth. And let's go see what we got on the 19th and today. Remember, this is my date and time, Central Standard Time right down here in the toolbar. And basically that's why you're going to see the quakes in Alaska and you've already seen some today uh, up in Alaska because you have that and over here. So basically the Indian Ocean area again, boom. And over, and remember, that's why we did actually have those quakes over in Iraq. Okay. And yes, folks, this will give you your X and Y axes, your north and south pole. And yes, we rotate towards the east. So everything is towards Green, green Witch. But look on the plot map through space. We are moving our ass. And we who knows what we are getting for degrees off of normal. Uh, the equator has moved, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, don't pay any attention to the counters. They don't want anybody to see actual factual, so make sure you watch this video because you'll see the meatball even more for the 20th footage and the 12th and the 12th and the 12th. And to show you that how much mass of the sun is actually doing, ladies and gentlemen, this is how much fireballs we're getting. This is the 18th footage, okay? So no matter what size they want to call these CME flares, they are huge and they just keep on a coming because that's the sun. And it doesn't like the meatball, either that or it does like it, and that's how the sun kisses the meatball, by blasting solar mass ejections at the sun. I mean, at the meatball, like crazy, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? The sun and the supergiants are throwing some spit or fire. Either they like or love the meatball, or they hate the meatball. And there is a comet, as you see to the left, moving along quite nicely, and was possibly hidden by the meatball earlier. As you see that it's come out from behind the meatball from what we can tell. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Earth is somewhere in a V triangulation, somewhere from Venus to Mercury. You find Venus and Mercury, and if this is Mercury or whatever, we need to figure out which planet and why is NASA not telling, me, telling us what planet that is, because that possibly should be Mercury. And then if it is, then the Earth is somewhere in a V. We're back up here somewhere. I mean, this could be us, this, us, us. Anything you see up here could be us. Okay, but we are somewhere, and we even could be, oh, now they do have, is that Mars listed down there? Hang on, hang on. If you want to watch the power of the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen, this is your date and time and everything, like you can pick it up. I'm not going to waste time with the language on it, and there you go. Uh, surface, there's your heat, and everything. that's your, your ocean temperatures over there, but we realize how warm it'll get later today in certain areas, and especially through this vein here, it'll be nice and warm up in here. Okay, so the sun and the supergiants will warm you up later in the day. Now remember, no matter what, what's going to be the closest to us is going to be in January and February of the next six months. Should be January, February, and like I say, February 28th is a very important date no matter what. Okay, pay attention to that. And this AU right here, this is the closest uh, that you could possibly get. Would be that there. And I computed it out in the last video, and I'll just, I got time enough here to, to make sure I'll show you the data. I'll blow it up and we'll see if it's Mercury or Mars right there. There's a comet blown up. 
Looks like it says Mercury or Mars there, but it's hard to see. Maybe it's just a V. Oh, no matter what, this is the freshest shot. 